Okay, a quick unboxing video here. We have some items here from Ampersand Art. Okay, they were the, uh, the manufacturer for an item called Stamp Board um, in the stamping community years ago. And it's still available. You can find it out there, and I kind of direct people uh, on where they can find it um, over, you know, over these years. But um, um, they're making a bigger push, or they're kind of pushing this again, um, I should say, okay? Now, that item was called Stamp Board, and I forgot the, what they were going to call these um, again. Or not again, but instead of stamp board. I don't know. They're, they're going to call it something like craft board or, or something like that. I'll, I'll put it in the comments section. Um, I don't think they've... Well, let me see here. Let me see what they have here. Um, let's see. No, they don't have the, uh, the literature for this. I think this is very preliminary right now. Okay. But to give you the gist of it... Um, stamp board, I think it was called something like craft board, or I, I don't know, I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. But their uh, uh, naming convention for all their boards for the company is B-O-R-D. Now, if you enter something like B-O-A-R-D, it'll, you know, you'll probably come up. But what these were here, in terms of their um, offering, in terms of their um, surfaces that they have, it was the clayboard smooth, okay? But for the stamping industry, you know, kind of going with larger panels, five by seven and up typically, cradled panels, etc. You know, stampers don't use that too much unless they're doing like a really special project then they might use, you know, some kind of larger type of um, surface to uh, do their projects on or a frame or something like that. So back when, what I had them do in the, you know, for stamping, was to create these different types of sizes that would be, you know, more uh, conducive for what we do in stamping, okay? So this one here, for example, is a one inch by one inch piece, and you've heard of inches before, maybe? If you're real new to stamping, you might not have heard that, but it was just doing these little tiny um, elements, embellishments, could even be a composition. We have um, some examples of these inches on the Stamp uh, Scapes website where you can actually do like a micro little scene in a tiny little, you know, surface like this. These made for great embellishments though. Let's say you stamp out a, a card and let's say it's a lake or something like that. Um, you can stamp out like a little, you know, person on a canoe or a kayak or something like that on a little inchy like this. And this is a raised piece. That, eh, they're about, I don't think, I don't know, they might be an eighth of an inch thick or something like that, roughly about. And uh, you can stamp something on there, you can color it, whatever, and you can put that down as, you know, they used to call it like spotlighting or something like that where you have this little raised embellishment coming off of it. And, of course, stampers love embellishments. Um, the inches were real popular. I think this one right here is the domino size, okay? So dominoes, stamping kind of on unconventional surfaces with the domino, that became very popular at one time. So what we did was we told them, hey, you know, why don't you do a domino size? You know, so instead of having this unconventional surface that required special media to be able to be applied to, like, say, something like a domino, you know, it just made sense for them to make something in a domino size configuration, okay? But it's just, it's the, it's night and day in terms of um, what this media, uh, the surface is meant for. Dominoes, you're not supposed to be, like, coloring on them. It's kind of cool, you know, in that it's, you know, a very uh, known uh, type of item, but this is meant to, you, it can take anything, it can take all the inks that we use in stamping, you don't have to use um, like a stays on that type of ink, you certainly could though, um, this takes all kinds of paint, stains, everything though, you know, I've done whole big panels where they're um, stained with like wood stained on these panels right here and it takes it beautifully and you can spray seal them, I like spraying them with a polyurethane to get this real thick type of um, sealant over the top of it so it feels like a glazed tile, okay? Now the bottom of these, or what this kale and clay, uh, this workable smooth clay surface is uh, 
screened on or how whatever their process is for coating these is a um, a hardboard panel it reminds me of masonite okay but this one right here is much better quality and it's um like i said uh, museum quality and archival okay so you know fine artists and painters are using these things so these things have to be perfect okay uh, just to give you the idea of in terms of quality let me see i think this one right here Inchi Domino. I think this is an ATC size one. So, you, you know, the popularity of the ATCs, artist trading cards, became very popular. Yeah, I don't know if these ones are going to fit in that slot. It might fit into it snugly. I'm not sure. I haven't even tried this one, but that's the ATC size. So a lot of people were very familiar with working in, in this um, dimension right here. So they made this one right here. Th those ones were really popular. The 2 by 2s were always one of my favorites in terms of sizes. I've done a lot of projects with this, and I've done uh, one of my favorite projects of working with um, kids like in the preschools or the, the Cub Scouts back when my son was that age, and they would do these, but then we would put on uh, like magnetic stripping on the back of it or even pins, you know, those ones with that adhesive that comes with it. So you can put that adhesive back in on it, and it becomes a pin that you can put on a, a shirt or something like that. Um, but a lot of kids, you know, we put on that magnetic stripping on the back of it. You know, it has that adhesive on one side, and you just put it down there. And these things stay up. We still have ours on our refrigerator, but you can do, like, refrigerator magnets on these types of things. I mean, all this stuff is, like, perfect for that. And this one looks like a 2-inch by... No, wait, no, this one's a four, oh, excuse me, this one's a four inch by four inch. So these ones right here were perfect for, a lot of people use these for coasters. And there's actually a box that, you know, that uh, Ampersand sells. It's a hinged, let me see, let me get it. This is a hinged box right here. And those are actually a couple of my uh, pieces that I did. You can see the snapscapes on there. Uh, but this box right here, um, is it, let me get an open one. Okay, sorry about that. This is a scene that I stamped out here. That's eyeball and uh, persons from a different company. But see this right here? I spray sealed it and I stamped the top of it. And it, it comes with this hinge um, set. Okay, and I don't know, but change in here. But these pieces fit right in there so you can sell a set of like a uh, coasters you know it makes for like an incredible little sentence i stain the side right here and i actually use a little bit of stain i think on the top of that i think i'm not really sure about that one but um uh these things fit right in here so i don't know the the, the possibilities on this stuff were was really amazing and like what i did in this piece right here do you see that right there that's the the underside of this panel right there so it's kind of cool you can put something on here and then you open it up and you can put you can inset you know maybe not with this one i, I did it with a piece of paper uh like glossy cardstock or something like that and i put it in there okay so you not only have this something that's stamped out here but you can stamp something on the inside here you can probably even put it you know down below there if you want to too but th the fact that this is raised right here um, makes for kind of like a shadow box application. So I put that little, eh, you can't see it right here real good, but I put like a, those dry little um, flower types of things in the foreground here. So it made it like a shadow box type of application of the inside of this. Okay, and so I'm kind of getting off the subject here. Those, these boxes aren't, um, you know, whatever they're going to call this craft board or whatever, but you know, these boxes right here are sold by Ampersand Art. And the surface of this right here, the lids right here, okay, this is just a, a label here that comes, you know, that's a piece of paper. But that white, you know, uh, area right here, this whole thing is this same type of surface. So it's designed, you know, and here's this little scene that I stamped right there on that one, just directly onto this lid here. This lid isn't attached here yet. You can hear the um, the hinges in here, so it's you know it's easy to stamp on here. You don't have to stamp on this box like this. You have this separate, okay? And it's uh, you know this part right here. This whole part comes off.
So anyways, this here, this type of stuff is really fun to do. And I don't know, there's all kinds of things you can do. Sometimes what we did was um, we took things like this too and we put a bunch of it down. We put it, lay, laid it all flat, or we took a large stamp, okay? Maybe even larger than this, you know, one of the g size stamps and stamp seeds. And then we just took these little inchies and we placed it on, we inked this up and then you, you know, you place it down like that. You ink it up this and then you put this down and then you take another one of these and put it there. Another one here, here, here. So you have all these um, inchies face down on here, okay? So you have all the, and then when you take them off, you have all these separate little inchy pieces, okay? And then you color them all up or whatever, in the, whatever way you're going to do it. And then you can just ship it to someone. And it's like this little puzzle, you know what I mean? Maybe it's for good for kids or something like that. I don't know. Adults did it for other adults, though, too. So they made, like, little puzzle pieces out of these ones. Not really in terms of, like, a, you know, like a jigsaw puzzle or something like that, but something where, you know, you put it together and it was just kind of a fun little thing like that, you know. They didn't do something with 100 pieces or something like that, but, you know, uh, you know, a three by four and a half inch or something like that. And it was kind of fun for people to uh, kind of develop those types of things. I really love working in these types of pieces, too doing triptychs, you know, I would take three of these or something like that, put it there, there, and there, and then what you do is you color this in, and then you place these types of things on a card, and you have three of them together like that. It kind of makes for a pseudo triptych, okay, and you have a little bit of space in between each one of those, and you can have it framed and matted off, so, and you can do that with certainly with paper, but there's this extra special little thing with these raised um, pieces like this, you know. And what I used to like doing, too, is if you have, like, like a metallic uh, or just colored pigment ink, you know, these alone like this are a little bit boring to me, okay? Just as is with that hardboard panel showing through like that. So um, what I did was I would do my little whatever project on that, okay? But then what I did... This is a metallic pad right here, but let's say that this one's here is a pigment ink pad. Let's say my scene was blue or something like that, or I don't know, I like blue and silver. So what I would do is I would tap it into my pigment ink pads. You can do it in uh, dye-based inks too, but like a yellow is not going to make that yellow in dye-based ink because dye-based inks are transparent. So pigment inks are a little bit thicker, so you just kind of dab it in there like that. And I really liked it with uh, metallics. And then you would get this perimeter on this board that was now like a metallic gold or something like that. It was gold was awesome in like a sunset colors or a silver with blues, okay? And then when you glue it down like that, it has that extra little kind of framing around the edges with the gold. But sometimes what I would do is I would squeeze it into the um, pigment ink pad a little bit so that some of it kind of goes over the front of it. So whatever you stamped in here, in my case in terms of a scene, you would get this little bit of framing with that metallic ink on there. So, and now you can do something like that because, again, this is a raised panel as opposed to, you know, just a sheet of paper. You can't really take a sheet of paper and dab it into, um, you know, pigment ink or something like that and have it, you know, not bend and everything on buckle like that. So... Anyways, you can see these things like that. It's really solid and dense, and again, the, you know, that surface there is, like, perfectly smooth, okay? It's not sealed and glossed off, because that's going to prevent you from being able to uh, apply your media on here, but it is really accepting of inks in just the right proportions. Dye-based inks kind of absorb in there just enough, but they don't bleed out at all. So it's something akin to, I would say, stamping on like a piece of matte or satin cardstock, except it's on a stiff hard panel as, as opposed to a you know, thin piece of, uh, of cardstock or whatnot. Okay, so anyways, that is my unboxing video of, um, I'll look up the name as <laughs> I forgot what it was, but maybe these are like the sizes that they're going to offer in terms of uh, crafting. Um, I think there was a couple other sizes that were available before, as well as like a, an assorted bag. 
of kind of the smaller pieces. I'm not sure if they're going to do that one or not. But I would say keep an eye out for that type of thing. And when these things are available again, I would re recommend for everyone to um, try these out. Um, you can still find a stamp board out there if you just kind of enter stamp board into a search engine. It could, should come up. So it's S N T A M P B O R D, not B O A R D, okay? All right, so anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. And we also have, um, uh, I don't sell too many of this anymore. You know, I'm just kind of doing this because I love it. Um, on um, the Stampscapes website, under the stamp board section, there's a few videos and a lot of examples of uh, different types of application. Now, uh, you know, it's a Stampscapes website, so it's Stampscapes based stuff on here. But th these panels, you know, are perfect for any type of, uh, you know, uh, uh, stamp design, type of design, and media. You can emboss on here if you want to or whatnot. So, I don't know. It just makes these things, it just makes your surface like extra or card extra special when it's on one of these panels like this. And they, they're, you know, really re quite reasonable. They're not as cheap as paper, you know, as you wouldn't expect them to be. But to get that kind of museum quality archival panel, and a pretty big bulk pack like that, you know, for a really extra special project, you know, I mean, you know, it does it doesn't cost that much, you know. So um, I don't know. It's very reasonable stuff. And ampersand art is those people over there are amazing people and super nice, and uh, you know, they were just awesome to work with. Okay. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you look into uh, the surface at some time.